you call it? Sting, stinger, uh, horn, something like that. The thing that can pretty much, I don't know, it's very sharp. Good morning. It's, uh, it's Sunday morning, 9 a.m and uh, I am on my way to one of our manufacturers. Uh, I woke up this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, went for a run, I think I ran 8.5 kilometers, something like that. And yeah, now I'm on my way. We have June right now, so since November last year, uh, I have been doing six days a week, eating as clean as possible, and then have one cheat day. And today is Sunday, so today is my cheat day. It was my mother's birthday a couple of days ago. And I saved myself some cake for today. And I just had like three slices of cake, three small slices of cake, and I feel horrible. I'm always very excited for my cheat days, but then I eat crap and I feel shit right after. And usually I'm pretty good with I can eat whatever and Turn I always back. feel fine, but it seems like eating cheap stuff, uh, eating unhealthy stuff does not do well for my body. So what do we learn from that experience? I don't know. I don't even know. I received an email from Atlantic Campaigns, which are the organizers for the Telescope Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. And it wasn't even from Nikki. And uh, she said that they are currently looking into options how to equip the boat to prevent it from marlin strikes. So, uh, if you can imagine, marlins uh, are big fishes, so they are very powerful and they have this long. Uh, um, what do you call it? Sting, stinger, uh, horn, something like that. The thing that can pretty much, I don't know, it's very sharp. It's very, it's just it's sharp. In the last year's race, 2020, there were four, four marlin attacks. In one race, which is crazy if you think about it. None of the people on the boat got harmed, uh, luckily, and also the boats are designed that uh, it will not make the boat, boat sink. But that's not a problem. I mean the hole, you can fix the hole. You can use the stuff to fix the boat so that there's no hole anymore. There's uh, even stuff you can use underwater, so basically you could fix it from the outside. The problem is that these stingers, they could go through your body, which is not very nice at sea because you're only on the boat and waiting for the support yard to arrive will take time. So um, currently boat builders and the race organizers and many, many participants of this year's race are looking into options on how they could equip the boat that at least the area where you are close to the walls that there you are safe for example um, many boats are equipped with Kevlar uh, in, the, in, the, in the cabin area they are also looking into the materials that are used in uh, bulletproof wet vests uh, so that might be an option as well Oops. I'm not sure if I should be concerned, probably not, because the chances are still very slim. I think it's very important to, uh, to know how to treat a wound very quickly, even at sea, uh, to make sure that uh, you survive at least for a couple of days until you get rescued. So yeah, um, there's a lot of challenges in rowing across the Atlantic and then also I mean I read a book about a guy who survived on a life raft for 72 days or 76 days 72 days adrift from Stephen Callagher and it's absolutely amazing this book especially the audio the audiobook because at the end of the book 
there's a section where he's, uh, inter he's been interviewed by the, the narrator of the audiobook. He was uh, in the middle of the Atlantic and something hit his boat, which could probably also have been a marlin or anything else. Anyways, hit his boat and his boat immediately starts, started sinking. And uh, so he had, to, he had to jump off the boat into his life raft. And he's, he figured out a system on a life raft to be able to survive. And meanwhile, he drifted uh, along one of the, those channels until he arrived in, uh, in the Caribbean. He says, even though he had this traumatic experience, he's still sailing to this day because he says, um, doing something you love doesn't mean that you always have a great time with it. It's work. It's work. It's if I'm running, if I'm training for a marathon. I will not love every day of my training. If I'm rowing across the Atlantic, it will not be fun. But that's not the point, because uh, if you really love something, that means that you are willing to go through the pain it comes with. If you are able to experience things, fully aware of everything that is happening, that you're in the moment, that you're really taking in everything that is happening, then you can learn from everything and that means that you will get better you will be a better person you will be a better athlete you will be a better engineer anyways to, to, to wrap this up there might be a possibility that I will spend my days on the boat in a motorbike helmet and a bulletproof vest as funny as it sounds um, I'm sure something like that this uh, needs to be done. I hope it's not sleeping with a helmet on because that sounds very uncomfortable. Some measures will be taken and uh, so thanks Nikki from Atlantic Campaigns to send us this uh, email. I really like the work Atlantic Campaigns is doing. They're keeping us updated. They have started with monthly calls uh, with the safety officer and monthly calls with their social media uh, experts. Yeah, I hope you guys are healthy, hope you guys are being safe and I hope, I hope I can meet you guys soon, I hope I can travel again soon. See ya!